So the question comes up a lot about what cable to buy. What should I get? But I want to address this little piece of it first because we run into this a lot. Plenum cable. Now, plenum cable is cable that is constructed out of a slightly different fire retardant plastic jacket for low smoke uh, polyvinyl PVC is a fluorinated ethylene polymer. I'll leave the link here so you can read these because I'm not good at all these uh, big words. <laughs> uh, but it's basically a fire retardant cable that you have to use in case you're using this inside of an area that is a shared air circulation area, a plenum. So what defines that? So the plenum space, and we're going to take a picture here for how a plenum space looks. So here's a drop ceiling. This is your living, working area. This is actually how our office is laid out. We have a forced air return and a forced air supply connected to our HVAC system. There's the dead, non-circulating airspace above the drop ceiling where we have cables properly loomed, hung from hangers, and run inside our ceiling. This is not part of the circulated air. All the Buildings I've been in in Michigan have always been set up this way. I don't know if it's because of our climate or whatnot, but I've been told by many people, most of them seem to be from down south, that this is a common setup where they just use the negative airspace of the ceiling. And instead of running duct work to here, they use this as the air pull. Well, in that case, now you're running cables technically inside of an airspace where the HVAC system's pulling everything from. So they want you to use a fire rated plenum cable because this would reduce toxic smoke in case of a fire. So here's your forced air in, but your air pull here. I have not seen these in Michigan. And one of the other comments I had in my previous video when someone said, well, it's not a municipal thing. It, well, actually for us, it has been. We have some cities that the requirement that the inspector, because they have inspections on this, uh, it's a city thing. They require plenum. They don't care if it's going in a wall or not. They just have a rule. So that being said, plenum, if you're sharing an airspace, may be a requirement based on some municipalities. And it is a recommended if your a, a National Fire Protection Association has specific rules. And I'll leave a link to this Wikipedia article. Now let's talk about other cables. And specifically, we'll start with what to avoid. CAT 6 1,000 foot UTP solid cable. Wow, this is great. CAT 6 1,000 feet for 56 bucks. What's the hang up here? Well, it's pretty simple. This is copper clad aluminum. They take aluminum and coat it in copper. So they can create a cheaper cable. This is not necessarily a good thing. Um, you don't get the best of both worlds here like they may try to claim. One of the problems is this will not conduct PoE quite as efficiently. Matter of fact, I don't know exactly how many watts it takes, but I will tell you copper can hold a lot more. I thought about trying to find a small box of this and doing some tests. I know a couple of people have done this on YouTube, but we're going to put uh, different wattages over them. We were discussing this. Uh, if we ever find or come across this that we're cutting out of a place, because we've unfortunately run into vendors that were really cheap and have installed these at places, and it's just not good cable. It breaks easier, is not as malleable because aluminum is not as malleable. Aluminum's great. Not for this, though. Uh, so it's not like I'm dogging on aluminum here. <laughs> uh, it's just this is the facts of how physics work and how metallurgy works. Copper is a better conductor and a better piece of metal to make ca cabling from. And the price difference isn't that substantial. I mean, if you just buy one box, you're like, well, it's 56 bucks here and 134. It's more than double the price for full solid copper cables. Well, it's really when you're looking at a job, uh, if you're doing a house, a thousand foot will probably cover an entire house, depending on how many jacks you have and how many you know line drops you need put in. But generally speaking, it works well. Just go ahead and spend the extra money. It's a one-time cost. Most of the expenses in labor, and we've had to break the bad news to clients that, yeah, a lot of problems are because they use the wrong type of cable. The labor exceeds what that cable savings was. Uh, most of the, you know, if you look at my bidding job, you'll see most of it is the labor that goes into putting the cabling in, not the cable. I mean, the cable has a cost to it, but it's not the substantial overall job price. It adds up, of course, when you start saying, hey, you know, we had a place that needed 70 boxes of cable. So that becomes a larger cost factor for people, but we still never go all the way down to that. We'll use just standard, you know, Cat 6 riser, which works perfectly fine. Cat 5e is still cheaper. You can still get a box for 85 bucks. And Cat 5e supports gigabit, perfectly fine. And they have the new 802.3 2.5 uh, G-Base-T that they're 
I, I don't know. I haven't really looked much into the cards that are coming out with there, but it's two and a half gigs over 100 meters of Cat 5e. So we're seeing some repurpose to that. But it kind of comes down to, you know, if you're doing it new, sure, Cat 5e is uh, probably not the one to go with. Cat 6 is going to be a little bit faster. And of course, with that same standard, we're going to get five gigabit out of 100 meters of Cat 6. But it's still out there. It's a cheap box. And if you have already have a place wired for that um, and you just want to add a couple drops, that's probably the reason we still see a lot of the Cat 5E uh, out there. Because, well, you're going to be punching it down to a Cat 5E patch panel that they already have. So you're adding a couple more. So you still see a lot of this out there. And for most people, Gigabit is still fine. That is still the adapters that ship with most computers is still going to be gigabit. I've, you know, until you get into the really high-end workstations, they're not shipping very many of them with RJ45 10 gigabit uh, jacks on them. And I haven't seen any of them of this in-between standard of the uh, 2.5 and 5 gigabit one. Nothing, nothing really that available. So the last thing to talk about is Cat 6A. Now, if you're building brand new and you want to go all out and make sure you future-proof your office, business, house, and you go, you know, I just want to go full out this. Now, Cat 6A does support the full 10 gigabit range um, over RJ45. This cable, though, and me and Corey talked about this, it is a lot stiffer, a lot harder to work with. So there's a lot more labor involved in installing it. But if you have the budget and it's not, especially if you're wearing a house, you probably only need one spool to get this going. Uh, spend a little bit more, especially if you're building something new, run this and be future proof. Not bad idea. Um, the Everything about it is a little bit more expensive as well. We talked about the Cat 6A shielded patch panel. We uh, Maybe I'll do a, sp a specific demonstration on this, but if you go all the way and get the shielded one, you can even go higher to shielded cables, a particular one I just had a link here for. Uh, this is Cat 6A unshielded. Let me find you the Cat 6A shielded, which goes up a little bit more. Here we go. That's the shielded one. There's the one we actually wanted to see. This has an extra uh, jacket in there. This will prevent interference uh, from other RF sources and things like that. So you can go with this and go full shielded on there. It works really well. And if you really want to future proof, once again, you're only talking another $50 and one box will do it. If you're doing home construction, this is far from your <laughs> expensive cost. And it's nice because it does do all the way up to, you know, 750 ETL listed over really nice stuff. We've installing this for a client. It's once you want to get into really high end and you need 10 gigabit and you don't want anything to interfere with it, this is good cable to use. But those are some thoughts and considerations of the cables. I'll leave some of the links in here. But like I said, stay away from that copper clad aluminum stuff. That stuff is bad. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.